Hello Gators! Once again, I'm saying hi! It's Mr. Dowd here. Welcome to Remote STEM Class. So last class, so on Monday, I went over on how to use the, or what we're doing with the vinyl cutter. Today I'm going to go through and talk about the Ultimaker printer we got, the 3D printer. So I just want to show what I made here. He almost just fell out of my hand. I uh, just tried to make something quick to print off. And can anyone guess who that is? Can anyone guess who that is? I want you guys to message me in class today, letting me know who that is. But I was just trying to do something really quick to print, and this only took like 10 minutes. Um, today I'm going to go through and print off this. So this was a keychain designed by Mrs. Reedy. It says mags, hashtag, double zero, I wonder why. <laughs> Anyways, so this was designed in Tinkercad. If you guys remember that program that I like to use a lot, but that no one ever wants to talk about or do the work. Hmm. Well, it's pretty important to use because Tinkercad is how um, I use the 3D printer because it makes a 3D model of it, right? So what I have to do is then save the Tinkercad file into a thing called or convert it into an STL file. STL has an acronym that I honestly forget off the top of my head, but that's what it does. Anyways, and then I load it into this thing called the Ultimaker Kira software, okay? So this software is related to the printer over here. Um, I have everything already set up. I have the coordinates I want for it already. Again, I'll go into more detail about this stuff once. Um, well, if you join Fab Lab with us to so learn more. So as of right now, it's going to take 33 minutes to print. So I'm going to go ahead and print. So now the printer is heating up. I know some students last year saw me print off a couple things. So it's going to go ahead right now. It's preparing to print. So it's heating up the cores and whatnot. So yeah. So it's going to be printing off that keychain for Mrs. Reedy. So what this software does is, while that's heating up, I can talk about this. It, uh, you see how it changes here? I can change the infill. So what that means is how densely filled the plastic is. So if it did 100%, it would be a solid piece of plastic. However, it would take a significant amount uh, more time to print. Okay, so by keeping the fill low, it prints quicker. Also, when I click on it, I can go ahead and with this tool here, um, it changes the size of it. All right, but you always wanna have uniform scaling. So if I change this to 10, it might screw up everything else so it wouldn't look as nice. Okay, but I think it's ready. It's gone. It's practicing the leveling now. Why do you think you need a good level when you're printing off? What do you think? Well, if it's not level, when you print off, it'll screw up practically. It'll be all slanted and not look good. But it's at the moment leveling, all right? So if you guys remember from using my printer, the this plate here, I always had to put glue on it. With this printer, I don't have to use glue because it's a heated plate. So that makes it so it adheses nicer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this for a second and I will start up again once it starts to print so you guys can see that. All right, guys, I'll be right back. Oh, actually, it might be done. Maybe I don't have to go with it. Oh, it's heating up. Yep, so I will pause it and I'll be back to you in a second. Hi guys, so we are back. Um, so remember, uh, we left off. So there's 32 minutes left on this print. So here it is going. So it moves on an X and Y axis and a Z axis. So X and Y is going this way and this way. And the Z axis is going up, which is covered by this plate here. All right, so it's going ahead. It's making an outline of Mrs. Reedy's keychain. All right, and I will be sure to take a picture of it to add to the Google Classroom. Okay, guys, when well, it's finished. So that's it's printing right now. All right, I wish I had brought my other camera. I could have had a a time slot of or a what's it called um a time lapse of uh, th this going, but. 
Unfortunately, I cannot. Alright, guys. That is all. See ya. Hello, hello, hello. Who doesn't like a good cinnamon roll? Right? These are a special treat in my house. I don't have them often. Usually around the holidays, I will pick them up and keep them in the fridge in case somebody wants them in the morning. So, very easy. You wanna peel that off. And then if you look in through here, pop it. You wanna make sure you spray the pan because they do stick. And when you put them in the pan, you wanna make sure that you put the cinnamon side on top. Okay. I usually put them in a round pan. I could not find my round pan. So they cook for about 10 minutes or so in the oven on 400 degrees. You'll be able to smell them to make the whole house smell, which is awesome. But... So they look like this, and when they come out of the oven, they're going to be big and plump, and then we can frost, put frosting on them. Okay, so I will see you when they're done. Okay, so they are done. Came out like that. Can you smell them? Maybe when I put the frosting on, you can smell them. So this is the frosting, and as you put it on, it melts. These are like so bad, they're like loaded with sugar, but they're obviously something that's a special treat now and then, which is okay. That's why I, I do them a lot of times on holidays. Do not buy them all the time, and they don't really fill you up. So. Okay, so here they are with the cinnamon frosting icing on your cinnamon roll. How do you know if they're done because you can't stick a fork in it? I usually lift up the bottom and see that it's brown. That's what I want to and while they're sitting in this pan, they still cook because the pan's still hot, or the, yeah, the glass pan. So I just leave it on like this and they're cool. And I have it sitting on this so it doesn't wreck the counter. Okay, so that's it. Easy peasy. I'm sure you've had them before. If not, give them a try. Bye. Hey Gators, welcome back to Language and Play. All right, so today we're gonna play a game. All right, we are going to play animal environments. What I'm gonna do is I am going to put four different images on the screen. All right, each environment will create a unique set of circumstances for your individual animal character. How would your animal character feel in each environment? How would they move? You're gonna get up, you're gonna move around the room, you're actually gonna feel some of these things, okay? Environment number one, the jungle. I want you to look around. I want you to feel what it's like to be in the jungle. Is your animal used to being in the jungle or are you not used to being in the jungle? For me, I'm Wally the walrus. I don't like being in the jungle. This is completely out of my comfort zone. So as I'm walking, I'm walking a little bit scared. New environment. Our next environment is going to be the North Pole. Oh, finally, I'm home. Oh, it feels so good to just lie down here in the ice and swim. Oh, this is wonderful. Notice the tone of my voice. Everything about my character has changed. I've become a lot happier. I'm in a very comfortable environment. 
Okay. Next environment. A volcano. <gasps> this is a terrifying environment. Oh my goodness, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go, but I can't walk. Every time I step down, my feet are burning. My little flippers are flapping in the burning waves of lava. Oh no. And our last environment. In this environment, you're in a New York City street. How does your character feel around humans? How does your character feel in a populated setting? And a Wally, pretty nervous. He's going to get very quiet. He's going to get very shy. He doesn't understand what's going on around him. Okay. Well, great job playing environments. I want you to go back to those different environments. You can even rewind the video and think about where your character is most comfortable. Okay, this is going to play into the setting that you choose for your show. Okay, how does your animal character deal with other animals? How does your animal character deal with humans? And how does your animal character deal with different environments? All right, so have fun. Play the game a couple more times if you'd like. Just rewind and go back to each environment. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. All right, great job, Gators. Hi guys, today we're going to continue on with our focus on architecture. Architecture can be a career in art because architects are artists who design buildings. Today we're gonna to look at some ancient Roman architecture. This building is the Colosseum and it's in Rome. If you look closely at the Colosseum, you may notice that some of it's missing. This Colosseum was built many, many, many years ago, and over time, it has been destroyed by things like earthquakes and just neglect and people not really taking care of it, and it started crumbling on this side. What I'd like you to focus on here, in the Roman architecture, you may notice these curved arches, these round curved arches. That is a feature of Roman art that you would often see, that curved arch. If you recall, looking at the Notre Dame of, um, Cathedral of Notre Dame, you will remember that there are those pointed arches down at the bottom. So that's something that was featured in the French Gothic style, pointed arches. But now we're moving on to the Roman architecture where you see these curved arches. Okay, so yes, you guessed it right. We're going to draw the Colosseum. You're going to need a piece of paper and a pencil. Okay, we'll keep that Colosseum image available to us. You always wanna have a picture reference nearby. It's very helpful. There, so I'm just gonna start off by looking at the shapes that I see. I'm going to draw it as it is and with the destruction here and all. So I'm looking at the shape that I see. This shape here is an elliptical shape. So the structure of the building itself is round. The Colosseum was built as an amphitheater. So people would go there to be entertained and watch sporting events and other kinds of things. The building was created in a way that all the visitors would have a good visual position or they would have good visibility of whatever the activity was taking place, any of the events that were happening. So we're going to start drawing an ellipse. So you're just going to be drawing something like this. The shape of the building was a kind of a roundish oval type shape. Okay, so that's just the top. I'm imagining that the whole thing is there. Eventually I'm going to be erasing the area on this right side but I just wanna start with my full ellipse drawing. So the Colosseum was built out of concrete, and at that time it was something that was used quite a bit to build structures. Now, oops, I wanna focus in on the rows that I see. So there's a first floor, second floor, there was a third, 
and then just kind of a wall at the top. So I'm just going to create some lines to show where those different floors are. Okay, I'm going to start drawing those oval, I'm sorry, those curved arches. So in the center of the building, I'm going to draw them kind of large. And as I go to the edges of the structure, I'm going to make them a little bit narrower. And that will give it the illusion of having that elliptical kind of round shape. So as I'm getting to the edge here, I'm just going to start making my archways a little narrower and skinnier. And that will help to give it that illusion of being on a curved formed building. Before I start my next row of arches, I'm just going to kind of show where the building has been broken away, sort of damaged here. Like that. I'm going to keep this area here and maybe bring it around here like a little ellipse kind of thing. And I'm going to erase this area that's no longer there. So if you ever find yourself in Rome, you will notice that this structure has been damaged. And what's left is this kind of jagged sort of broken wall. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to let you guys start drawing your Colosseum. And we'll finish it tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Virtual PE. I'm Miss Sweetie. All right, today's another stretch day. We're gonna do our lower body, so here we go. I'm gonna grab our leg and pull. For those that are having a hard time balance, you can hold your nose, your ear, touch your belly button. Or grab onto something. And switch. We're going to stretch our groin, so we're going to lunge one side and keep this foot flat on the ground and the leg straight. Some kind of solid object. I'm going to do a calf stretch. You'll put your toes up against the wall. 
you don't have a wall, you can always lean back and step back like that too. switch. hips again get maybe a little bit more of a calf stretch and doing a little bit of a back stretch and I guess maybe some abs So we're going to do a hamstring stretch, which is the, one, the muscle in the back of your leg. Again, key is leg straight, knees locked. Again, keeping our legs straight, knee locked, go down as far as you can. back with your hands For the last stretch, we're just going to grab our knee. If you need a chair, sit on your bed or lean against the wall, you can do that. Just grab your knee and pull it. Otherwise, if you have good balance, like for me today, <laughs> then you just do this. Oh, it spoke too soon.
Ne sorry. Have a great one. Okay, hope you enjoyed that workout yesterday. If your shoulders up a little bit sore, your arms, we're gonna get stretched today. Okay, so we're gonna go upper body stretch. You guys have been through this before, let's get right into it. Okay, first we're just gonna bend our upper body a little bit and just kind of roll your shoulders. Okay, just back and forth, roll them out. Nice switch on the other way. Stretch for 10 to 15 seconds. Good, let's switch left arm across your body. Good, let's put your hands above your head now. Let's just stretch side to side. Let's lean. Your head, just kind of lean back. Switch. Good, right hand on your shoulder. Pressure on your elbow. All right, let's go left hand on the shoulder. Let's put pressure on that elbow. Good, now let's just do a little neck, roll your neck out. Get a little pressure on the side and hold. Not too much. Just feel a nice stretch. Switch. Let's get your head forward. Let me turn to the side, get those arms back, and get that arm stretch. Very good. All right, we'll see you tomorrow with another workout. Thanks for watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.